Hey, and welcome to another BP Man in Action video. I'm here with this lovely person. Hi, my name is Nila, and I'm a developer advocate, and I really love BPMN. <laughs> and I'm here today with... Well, I'm Niall, and I also like BPMN a bit, and we've both been doing videos um, about um, BPMN in Action, and uh, Nila thought this would be a good idea to do a video on the history of BPMN. Why is that, Nila? Yeah, so today we have a short video on the history of BPMN and give you an idea why BPMN exists. And you can see it here already in the BPMN diagram. There was another language called Beeple, and there was an effort to define the standard to have actually the standard and then BPMN is the um, outcome. And we take you on the journey um, how that was created. Yeah, buckle up before the film rights get sold. We begin our journey in the year 2000, the future if you're in the 90s, and with service-orientated architectures. This was a common um, architecture of the time in where we wanted to have loads of uh, individual services communicate, usually using SOAP in some way. Now, to do this, we needed some kind of way of describing the communication, the flow, and thus came this beautiful XML. This is Beeple. Beeple is an XML description of various services being called. It's super, it worked great at the time, but developers are not the only ones in this space because at the time, we had the idea of architectures being spanned across multiple services was very much something an analyst would generally describe in, in some kind of designer. So while you had analysts design these things um, in, let's say, some kind of uh, uh, UML-oriented diagram uh, process, you then also had someone had to replicate that in, uh, in this XML. What you ended up having was then people wanting to represent this in a diagrammatic way back to those users or even to use themselves, which was not easy because this is just XML. But there were designers out there and here what they look like. The problem was there was no unified description on how this looked. You had loads of designers that existed for people all trying to show you what that model might look like if it was visualized. And so the backend kind of worked to orchestrate things, but then trying to actually visualize it in a way that was usable was really, really hard. And also you could not transfer these things easily between different modelers. So functionally, people was actually kind of okay. The problem was with the more complex things you build and the less visualization you have, the harder it is to actually keep track of things. And without a proper way of visualizing um, in a unified way, you're gonna have a really hard time with people if you wanted to involve um, analysts or complex processes. This problem was solved and Nela will tell you how. Yeah, sure. Maybe it's good to mention that Beeple stands for Business Process Execution Language, and that was exactly what Beeple was doing. And I think that's quite a unique um, perspective, because if we look at other languages, modeling languages, what we see here is that um, the execution normally did not come first, but the visualization come first. So this is a different way when we talk about BPMN. And um, people back then in the year 2000 had the same issue. So they had a good execution language, but they had no visualization. and um, there was a group founded around the year 2000 called Business Process Management Initiative, and they were working on a standard to find a way to describe those elements in a standard way, and they released in the year 2004 BPMN 1.0. Of course, this uh, initiative was relatively small and is not an initiative taking care normally of standards. So they were quite happy when they merged um, in 2004 with um, actually the object management group. And the object management group, it's kind of a big consortium and they have multiple standard languages. Um, for example, they are also responsible of UML. And um, then from there on the um, OMG took over and uh, worked on the um, development or further development of the BPMN standard. And uh, what we can see here is that in the year actually 2007, they already had a first release of um, BPMN RFP 2.0. And finally, well, when we really say what was the what was the line when it was used BPMN 2.0, that was the year 2011. That's 
here. And um, there has been slightly some changes because in the year 2030, the language got the ISO certification and due to the certification, they needed to make some changes in the, in the standards. So that's um, why we have a new release here in 2013. And since then, I think everyone that uses BPMN now is on that standard BPMN 2.02. And um, what is the biggest change actually between BPMN 1 and BPMN 2, that's something you can see here. Um, first, it was it's a name thing. It was called with a with a 1.0 standard business process modeling notation, but we really had just the visualization. We had not the execution behind it. And then and with the standard of 2.0, also the XML behind the visualization was brought into the standard. So we really have the model and the notation. Um, and if you are interested to learn a little bit more about at, like especially the phase here when everything was founded, um, we will put a link into the description of an interview with Stephen A. White. He was one of the people really pushing forward for the standard and it's quite interesting if you want to have a little bit more background here. Um, also, I hope you don't mind, we stole kind of this, um, this graphic. We will also put this book into the description. Um, about the history, how BPMAN was founded. Um, yeah, and I think that's basically the idea. And what I quite like about it is that the execution language was always first when we when we looked at BPMN from that perspective. And at least at the moment, I'm not aware of any process language that can be executed as BPMN. Now, do you know any other? I mean, not really, but you can only really know what's going on by seeing it visually. And next we want to show you what the difference looks like when we have a BPL XML and a BPMN XML and how that relates to the model. So let's go into a quick demo. To show the differences of BPMN versus BPL, it's important to see what uh, has been added, what has been kept and uh, what has been taken away. In Beeple, we see that we have very similar elements. We have the word element here describing something or other. We have a sequence here. And if I show you the BPMN XML, uh, which is here, you will see that there's a lot of similarities here. There's like you see here, there's, a, there's an element, there's a flow, there's an event. There are some things that are very, very similar. But if we look at what is missing, some of the key things that are missing involve visualization, as mentioned before. You cannot um, build this and then expect a visualization uh, to appear in the way that you imagine in your head because there's no way in this XML to detail how mm -hmm. things should look for the end user who wants to look at this. At the time there was a solution though. Yeah, because we need this uh, solution because you wanted to exchange back then already your uh, BPL models or your process models with other tools and uh, around the year 2000 there was also a language um, created called XPDL, which is the XML process definition language. And this language was actually used to define how symbols look like and where they are placed on the canvas. And um, the real hustle was here that you had normally a BPL and a XPDL. So you had multiple um, files to describe one process. And this was basically solved with BPM 2.0. It was indeed because by adding the the a very particular part of the BPMN model, the XML, to the model, we combine those two things in one. And I can show you that visually. Right here, we have this section here, the BPMN DI. Uh, this is the diagram interchange. And what this does is it actually describes how exactly every element of the process should look. So for instance, if I change the visualization section, we can see that we have people, we define a standard, and then we have BPMN, right? And this is a nice visualization of what's going on. On. and people could have had that as well if you have all those other standards involved. But if I go in here directly in the XML of a single file, I can decide, hey, I really want a giant start event because, you know, let's do that for some reason. And there we have it, boom, we have now got a giant start event because the diagram directly describes that. Now this means that if I were to move this into a uh, into a different tool, we, we will be able to see exactly what we modeled here uh, because the diagram is described that way. And in fact, this is done on an annual basis. There's a group in the OMG called the MyWig, the, uh, for, for um, diagram interchange, in which all of the vendors who um, export and import correct BPMN 2.0 all get together for a fun party where they basically build a model and transfer through the different tools live so you can see the, how the standard can maintain 
all of this meta information as it passes through multiple tools. And it's even more impressive because some of these tools are simply there for execution, some are just for modeling. And uh, Commander always takes part in these as well as a bunch of other tools. We'll leave a, a video description to that at the bottom. But this should sort of indicate some of the value of BPMN, both as a visual language as well as an execution language. So I hope this little video has outlined for you how the language was defined, how the standard was defined, and maybe you are also now excited to use it. Um, and there is so much more in BPMN 2.0. Uh, there are more symbols actually defined than it was in 1.0. But I hope you liked the video and got excited to see our next videos when we talk a little bit more about the modeling and what is possible. So hope to see you next time. Bye bye.